Hey, what's up, everybody? So I've been learning Unreal Engine for the past couple of weeks, and I have made my first Star Wars fan film. Uh, I'll put a link in the description so you can see it on my channel. And this video is going to be a quick overview of how I did that uh, with Unreal Engine and uh, DaVinci Resolve for the color grade and the editing and the sound design. Uh, and here's how I did it. Check it out. All right, so let's get started uh, sort of at the end here with the finished product in DaVinci Resolve so you can sort of see what we were going for here. And then I'll go back and show some of the Unreal sections and how I made the scenes that we put into DaVinci Resolve. Uh, so anyway, as you can see here, you know, this is the main timeline. Spoiler alert, this is only like two minutes long. So if you haven't seen it, there's a link in the description. Go ahead and watch it. Um, and then, you know, watch this. I mean, it's not really a spoiler, you know. But anyway, so... Um, uh, these are all the different scenes. I think I counted maybe there were 10 or 11 scenes um, that I had to create for all of this. So I started out, you know, having all of those laid out. I'll also put a link in the description um, and potentially up in the top corner with a playlist of um, how I created the story to begin with. This is actually a redo of a previous story that I did with my kids as a live action type thing um, a year or so ago. Um, and so I wanted to redo the same story as an animation, something I had envisioned back then and one step closer to it uh, at this point. So there's a playlist that kind of talks about using the story circle and how I created this, um, you know, quick little simple story and pieced all of it together, broke, you know, broke it all into different scenes. Um, and then so this is, you know, another interpretation of that type of storyboard. So anyway, um, all of that is you know, laid out here, as you can see, these are some pretty simple cuts. I did use some of the basic, um, for the Star Wars transitions, um, that you see in the movie, some of the basic wipes. People consider that cheesy, but for Star Wars, it's kind of a must have, right? So, um, and then, you know, there's some titles. So basically this is the full, you know, layout. Um, I do most of my affecting on an adjustment clip and where I will, you know, add a little bit of camera shake or I will use um, film convert nitrate to kind of add a film uh, emulation look to it. Um, and then I will color grade the, you know, individual clips. I'll get in, back into that in just a little bit. So let's switch over to Unreal and I'll show you a couple of my levels and how I created the cinematics. All right, cool. So over in Unreal, uh, this is one of the levels. This is where the Jedi has landed on the planet and um, is walking from his A-Wing to the Sith Temple. Um, and so you can see here, this is the camera movement, just a straight push through here, following him up. You know, and then the camera is going to kind of pan up so that you can see where he's going. Um, this was not really a scene that we had in the live action version uh, previously. I just kind of had one of my kids kind of looking through the trees like he was, you know, in the woods or whatever. Uh, but at any rate, this is a pretty cool steam effect. I think I got this on the uh, Unreal Marketplace. Um, the same with, you know, all of the models. I think the only things I created were maybe, you know, the lightsabers and a couple of other little pieces, you know, of um, the environment. Uh, but speaking of environment, these are various trees that... Um, that I put into place here. Um, and as you can see with this, let's see if I can get this to switch um, out. Let's see, um, yeah. Uh, I'm always so terrible at navigating. So as you can see though, I only filled out what the camera needed to see. And this is, you know, saves a lot of time. There's no point in building an environment that the camera's not going to see for cinematics. Now, if you're making a game, obviously that's different. You want an open world or something, you have to put stuff everywhere. And that's something I probably will get into next. Um, so but let's see, let's see if it can switch back to the camera view. So, um, but anyway, as you can see, and there's, you know, a little bit of wind moving the trees, clouds, um, some of these uh, sun rays coming through like that. So this is basically the type of thing I would set up you know, I know that I need to have this. What's the camera going to look like? Um, I did a little bit of an animation of the guy walking, um, you know, that type of a thing. So let's open up a different level. All right, so this is one of the lightsaber battles. Um, I kind of wanted to, you know, do a little bit of this, but not too much of this. Like I said, you know, in the intro, I really only wanted to spend about a week or so on this so I can move on and do something else. And this is not really like my life's work or anything. This is just, you know, a way to learn how to animate these characters uh, and to use different parts of Unreal. So um, at any rate, you can see that I have a couple of different animations strung together here. These are some um, sword finishing moves that I bought on the... Uh, Unreal Marketplace as well. Um, there is, you know, it's kind of, they're matched. You have an attacker and a uh, victim type thing. So 
this is my camera movement swiveling around this guy here and you know this was really kind of to add some action and and so that you know to kind of hide some of it uh, as well because they're not exactly timed up this is a great part right here though where he just goes through him so um you know this type of thing it wasn't very difficult to do once i learned how to retarget the animations to this skeleton there's another video on my channel where i talk about how i did that type of thing and there's you know other um you know videos out there that kind of show you how to do that retargeting type thing all right so here is another one that is um from outer space and i believe that i have got this uh space skybox or something also on the unreal marketplace um i kind of you know went into this knowing that i had a budget you know of you know a little bit of money so that I could get the models that I wanted and not spend so much time on trying to create these things doing something that I'm not really all that good at just yet so to start with it's easier for me just to find some cool looking assets online spend a tiny bit of money and you know put them into my own story it saves me a lot of time on trying to create these things on my own in blender things I'm just really not that good at just yet so at any rate you can see uh, this animation uh, this is where you know the Jedi is coming out of hyperspace kind of cruising across the camera does tilt, I guess, or pan, whichever that's called, and he heads off down to the planet. Most of the animation on this one is, you know, the A-Wing moving through space uh, and the camera doing the uh, the pan there. So uh, anyway, that's, you know, pretty much how I did these scenes. Uh, there is the one scene where I used a Niagara effect. I'll show that real quick, and then we'll move on to Da Vinci. All right, and so, you know, the final scene where the Jedi has found the um, the Sith artifact, the holocron, and he's being sucked into the dark side. Uh, I used the same uh, Sith holocron model that uh, I used in the intro sequence here, uh, and the same Niagara effect, and, you know, just kind of shot it for a close-up. I actually learned a lesson on this. I thought that I had saved a copy of the original uh, intro sequence, and it turns out that I overwrote it with this, so I kind of lost that. Uh, but I have all the same assets here. I just have repositioned them for a different camera take in the same way that you would if you were, you know, resetting a scene for a different take if you were filming it with, with actual actors. What happens here, you know, the camera kind of has already panned in, and you can see a little bit of this Niagara effect here. Let me back up and show some of that real quick. Um, this was pretty simple. Let's see what I did here. I think I found a tutorial online and got my crazy terrible uh, folder stuff here. Let's see, what did I call this? This is Niagara Effects. So um, this is the basic system. These are just like, um, you know, little uh, emis emission uh, materials, little particles that are just kind of spinning around. Um, let's see here, let me back out on this camera. Maybe it's a little bit better. Yeah, you can kind of see them there. Um, I'll show a better clip of that uh, in DaVinci. So let's get out of Unreal and we'll switch over to DaVinci Resolve. So one thing I did with this that I typically do when I'm filming videos, like a music video for an artist or something is, uh, as I'm getting the clips, I'll go ahead and start piecing them together in my video editor so I can see kind of how they're going to look, you know, if they're going to, if they're given the feel that I want so I can, you know, kind of change things as I'm filming things if I need to and I'm not stuck with whatever I've already filmed at the end. So just in general, it really helped me to kind of do both of these things at the same time. So. Here is um, that Niagara effect I was just talking about on the intro sequence. Let's see. You can see it's pretty thick and spinning around this holocron here. And so this is uh, this is where I actually got to use MetaHumans for this. Had an issue using it once I had uh, attached it to a different skeleton. I couldn't quite get the live link to work anymore. Um, I had to revisit that and see what was wrong with that, but I was able to use it enough to, you know, make it look a little bit better, you know, at some parts of the video. Uh, this scene is actually something I had recorded in the original version of this, um, you know, against a green screen. Uh, I was able to pull it into this and sort of, you know, have a dual purpose use for it um, for both versions. I was able to easily composite that on top of here. I tried to do this inside of Unreal, but I kind of ran into some issues with the chroma keying because it, it actually was against a black screen and not a green screen, and the chroma couldn't really pick up the black for some reason. I'll revisit that later and see if I can figure that out. Um, you know, let's see, here's, um, the, pre the other scene, obviously I added some titles to this in DaVinci, um, let's see, 
I don't want to give too much of that away. I want everybody to kind of watch this and see what they think about it. You know, leave me some comments. Hopefully they're nice comments. This is way, way better than what I was doing in Blender before. So I'm much more excited about this. Uh, so after I pulled my clips in and sequenced them, uh, then I did a little bit of color grading on them. Um, you know, for the most part on the ProRes clips, I just kind of did a little bit of a dip in the shadows. Um, and I kind of, you know, pulled back some of the highlights to kind of give that low contrast film type look. Um, I may have boosted the saturation and done a little bit of, of other color adjustments. Um, but in general, I was trying to be pretty fast on this and I didn't really want to spend a ton of time once it was looking okay. Um, you know, another part of the sequence here. Let's see. So, you know, that's pretty much it. Uh, if anybody has any questions, leave them in the comments. I'd be happy to, you know, uh, answer them there. Or if I need to, I can make another video, um, you know, explaining some more stuff in more detail. So anyway, thanks for watching this and I hope you enjoy the fan film.